Hey guys, and thank you so much for tuning into my channel. My name is The Lady Designer, and we are back with another speed build video of City Zoo. And in this episode, we're almost going to finish the African elephant habitat. And I'm saying almost because the front of the building and the inside of the building is not entirely finished yet. So that is going to be in a separate episode. Not sure if that's going to be the next episode or that is that that is going to be the episode uh, at the end of this series. I have no idea yet, but for now we're going to finish the backside of the African elephant habitat. And that is very interesting because we wanted to create some kind of cheap safari ride in this zoo. So this is actually the first habitat that the people will be able to see from the Jeep safari itself. But I can remember somehow that people told me that you normally in zoos would not really see a Jeep safari going right through the African elephant or like an elephant habitat in general because that might be too dangerous. And with that in my mind, I have no idea if that was correct, if I remember correctly, but with that in my mind, I decided to have a race track going right next to the habitat, basically. But the guests will definitely have this very clear and beautiful viewing in this huge, humongous African elephant habitat. And I think it definitely looks really, really nice. So I obviously try to make sure that the raised terrain where the Jeep Safari goes through, that I measured that out with the elephants itself. So I really wanted to make sure that like sometimes if you don't pay attention to the height, it would be just way too high, for example. And I really wanted to avoid that. So I really wanted to make sure that the height of the terrain was just a little bit higher than the elephants itself. And it's not going to be like that the elephants will be way lower than the guest riding in a car, in a Jeep, I should say. And uh, for the habitat itself, as you can see, it's like a huge habitat. And I really wanted to give these elephants like this really nice water section to swim and to cool down because I really love to see elephants playing around in their habitats in the water. I remember this from when I went to Rotterdam Zoo. No, this is not inspired of Rotterdam Zoo, guys. No, 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 it's not. But I do remember when being there and it was summertime and there was like a keeper with a water hose and they had like this water section where they could swim in and there were, I think, with three or four elephants together playing around it's just so amazing to see. So with that in my mind, I really wanted to create this big water section. And as you may have seen, I used the six meter wall trick to make sure that the water would potentially be big enough if these elephants will ever be updated with some kind of aquatic diving or like need at least playing around more in the water and sometimes maybe go under for a little bit. Uh, because they're playing, uh, I really wanted to make sure that this habitat would be potentially ready for a potential update in the future. I really do hope that that will be something they will be added, but obviously there are tons of animals we really want to see playing around more and diving in the water section. So I have no idea if the elephants will also make it. There is a zoo in real life that really has this underwater viewing to see elephants underneath the water. If you have seen my Malin Zoo series, I also created an underwater viewing just because of that zoo, because that looks just super amazing. So yeah, with maybe that in my head, it could be that Frontier will decide to maybe have some more animations with elephants so we can really create some really cool underwater viewing galleries in the future. But this habitat does not have an underwater viewing gallery uh, because, well, we're not going to build an underwater viewing for each and every animal in every zoo, okay? <laughs> and I don't think we really have to make those for the elephants in this case. So as I said, like, I really tried to measure the terrain out with the height of the elephants to not make it, make it, like, too big or too high. And I used this elevation for around the whole habitat. So we have this steel fence around the habitat, but I covered a lot of the fences with more raised terrain. Uh, if you have seen my mailing zoo, as I just mentioned, or maybe my desert franchise zoo, 
You would also know that this is a technique I've been using a lot for elephant habitats. That is basically, I'm not really sure anymore what zoo I inspired it of, but the Milan Zoo habitat was inspired of a real life zoo. And this is what I learned from using that habitat as inspiration. So, and this is definitely something I just feel like this happens a lot in different types of zoos that you have like this raised terrain with like plants and trees on top of it to actually in real life make sure that the habitat still looks nice and, and beautiful with trees and shrubs and stuff but the elephants will not really be able to reach it to eat for example plants or trees that they would not they should not be eating for example so i think it's it's also like a safety thing for the elephants and uh, yeah as i said like when doing that in mainland zoo, it's something that every time I think of an elephant habitat, I feel like I should use this technique for some reason. I uh, I don't know why, but that is just why. <laughs> but still at some spots for more of the realism taste, I you can still see like the steel fences. So it's not going to be completely closed off everywhere. So there's also going to be some more open spots, but those open spots are more there for the realism, but not for guests to look into the habitat. The guests are only able to see the elephants either with the indoor section of this building or from the Jeep Safari itself. There will not be any path going around this habitat or at certain areas. There is definitely going to be in a section in this whole zoo for the Jeep Safari where the guests really need to go to this Jeep Safari to be able to see certain types of animals. So that is the idea behind this Jeep Safari ride. And I think it's it's going to be uh, very nice. And we have a few other African animals that are going to be placed in this ride. And uh, we're, we're going to try, like this one is definitely a way bigger habitat, but we're definitely going to try to make the other habitats a lot more smaller, more, more feeling of a city zoo size because well you should imagine that the zoo is basically in between the city so there's not that much room to expand and uh, this is definitely one of the bigger habitats of that ride but we're, we're going to have smaller habitats around it to uh, finish off the jeep safari itself it finish off it sounds like we're almost ending it already but that's definitely not the case we're just getting started basically but yeah you guys know what i mean so the track ride itself, as you can tell, like just as Inama Zoo is placed underneath the terrain, I know that it's a frequent asked question in a lot of my comments. So yes, if you have no idea how to do that because you're having errors when you want to put the track underneath the terrain, I highly recommend you to watch my top 10 tips and tricks tutorial for Planet Zoo. I will put it in the description down below if you haven't seen it yet. There are probably some more tips and tricks that you haven't seen before. I heard a lot of people telling me like, oh my god, I'm playing this game for so long and I didn't know this or that. So highly recommend you to watch that one if you're interested in knowing how to put that track ride or any other ride in general underneath the terrain instead. Definitely uh, go and check out that video. So as you maybe can tell, like in the habitat itself, there's like this very shallow stream connected to that bigger water section. And I really wanted to create something like that because I don't know, it really divides the habitat into a more natural habitat and just having this really shallow water where the elephants will be able to drink from, but well, not really cool down. I don't know. I think it's just looking really nice. And uh, I really use a lot of the aquatic rugs to really decorate this whole water stream. I did overdo it a little bit too much. So in the end, I really had to remove uh, bits and pieces because else the elephants would not be able to even cross over this shallow water. So I really had to uh, keep that in mind and check out the traversable area every so often to make sure that they were able to still cross it. And also what I really tried to do was using those, I, I think, I'm not really sure how they are called. They're logs, like you have those standing logs, but you also have the more fake but more natural looking logs that you can lay down on the floor. Like the big standing logs are definitely logs that I think fit very well for these bigger type of animals. I think in real life, they're used a lot to make sure that the elephants would not be able to reach certain areas, for example. 
But also for decoration, I think they just look really nice to put them here and there into your habitat to really decorate the place. But yeah, and, and also these the small little rocks, they're definitely amazing to work with. And um, I, I think I, I spoke a lot about these small little rocks a lot, but I just want to mention like just looking at the end result of this habitat comparing to habitats that we build before we got the aquatic pack. I think it's just such a huge difference and I think it's just so amazing. I think it looks so much more realistic and so much more coming to life in my opinion. So yeah, we're gonna keep doing that and I'm gonna keep talking about that for the rest of my life probably. <laughs> no, but for real, I just really do like how this is all coming together with those small little rocks. And as I said, like these uh, bigger logs that you can like lay down I, I really think that a lot of zoos just use that for, for some decoration and I really wanted to uh, resemble that a little bit too. So that is why I put down a few, I think two or three of those bigger logs and laying them down on the floor for some more decorational purpose. I think uh, that looks just really nice and uh, it, it's not really meant to do anything. I'm not really sure if the elephants would be animals that really would rub themselves if they uh, if they need it or or something like that if it's an enrichment item in real life I'm not entirely sure well they do have the rubbing pillar so it, it, they might do that I'm not really sure that that by the way reminds me of something completely off topic but I just recently saw a video of some baby elephants that were playing around in the sand together and they were really rolling and it looks just so amazing and I was like oh my god that is just something that I don't know, I really hope that we would see more in this game. Like obviously you have like this mud bath, which I didn't add in this habitat by the way, but you have this mud bath where you see them a little bit rolling around, but those type of animations like really just freedom, playing around, rolling through the grass or anything like that, that would be just super fun to see, right? I would just love to have those type of animations, that would be super amazing. So yeah, as I said, I really had to be careful with the habitat, uh, like realistically you want to avoid having too many shrubs and, and trees and stuff in the habitat. So yeah, especially as I said, I think for elephants, but correct me if I'm wrong though, but I think for elephants they use this elevated terrain technique so they cannot really reach it and eat it if they are, that could hurt them for example. Uh, but, okay, so we are using a lot of the aquatic rocks and it's a lot. And in the end, I really didn't want to delete it because I really do like the look of those small little rocks. But I felt like I did have to add a few trees and a few shrubs and bushes to really finish it off. I, I don't know, I really felt like it had to be added in a way and like I think it that looks so much better in the end and obviously we also add some more enrichment items in the habitats to really put it down strategically to make sure that the guests because the guests are only in the jeep safari so they can't really see the elephants super up close unless you have these enrichment items pretty close to the track where the track is uh, passing by so yeah having enrichment items more strategically strategically placed Close to the track ride definitely works well for these type of rides to make sure that the guests will still have this glimpse of the elephants because the last thing you want is your guests being complaining on the internet that yeah okay cool that jeep safari ride but I didn't see any elephant and then they're just super unhappy with it so yeah that's definitely a thing you really want to avoid in your zoo. So I'm actually unsure about the next episode of our city zoo. I, uh, as I mentioned in a previous episode, I think I that was in a previous episode. I have been working on a Formosan Black Bear Habitat during my live streams on Twitch. I stream on Mondays and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. CET, if you're wondering, the link is in the description down below. And um, I, I started two different Formosan Black Bear Habitats for Little Asia. And I just really wasn't happy with the end result. At first I started with some kind of temple, but uh, the further I go, like not the temple itself, but it just didn't feel fitting for Little Asia. So I wasn't really happy with that. And later on, uh, we scrapped the idea and then we started a new type of habitat, which was more of like an Asian building. And then I, I didn't feel it and that is sometimes just super frustrating but yes even I have issues sometimes with like not feeling creative or not knowing 
what I should do for a certain type of animal. Hence why we still don't have a habitat video for a caiman because I am just completely blank when it comes down to the caiman. I'm not really sure why that is, but as I keep saying it, as soon as I have inspiration for it or I know the perfect spot for them, then I will definitely build a habitat for these awesome creatures. But so far, I just really don't know. And I saw a few people commenting like, can't you just add them in the reptile house? But the reptile house is finished. We don't have any space left for any caiman. So that is just not really going to work out. So yeah, so far, I just really don't know what I'm going to do with the caiman. But I also really don't know yet how I want to add the Formosan black bear. So I'm probably going to uh, put that whole idea on hold and just start a different habitat in Little Asia. And then, as I mentioned in the previous episodes, I'm going to switch off with more uh, African regions, so the Jeep Safari, and then we're going back to Asia, Little Asia, something like that. Obviously, things might change if I am not feeling creative for one animal, but I am for Africa, then I'm probably going to go back to Africa again in the next episode. But yeah. Ah, it's all going to be fine, obviously. It will be fine in the end. But yeah, we're already reaching the end of the video, so please do let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of this new African elephant outdoor section in our city zoo. Leave a like at the video if you guys enjoyed, and subscribe, of course, if you haven't already. And if you want to support the channel a little extra, you may want to consider to become a Faith fan member with the join button of YouTube or via Patreon with the link down in the description. You can also find me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And all those links are also down in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I really hope to see you guys all in the next one. Bye guys!